Hello everyone, my name is Auro and welcome to the 7th devlog of my base building game Chambers of Devious Design. In this devlog I will be adding a few new cool room types to the game among other things like creating a simple scoring system and a simple dialogue system. Alright, let's get started. This week I decided to start with adding upgrade levels to my rooms. My idea with this is that every time a room receives a neighbor it likes, the upgrade level goes up by one. Then whatever effect the room has on the gameplay, that gets boosted up by the upgrade level. I had the quick info bus ready from the last devlog, so visualizing the upgrade level was an easy task. Now you can get a quick look at what the current upgrade levels look like for each room. Next, I started working on a bigger info panel for the rooms. I mentioned previously that one big issue I have is that my rooms don't have enough real estate to show all the information on top of them that I want to show. So I figured on top of the small quick info bars, I would have a bigger info bar with all the available information that can be activated by clicking a room. Hopefully I don't come up with any extra information I need to show as I would very much like keeping the font sizes readable and not have the info panel take up the whole screen. Working on the info panels wasn't the most exciting thing in the world, so I decided I would work on something fun next. I settled on adding some special functionalities to my rooms. Currently only my bomb room has a special purpose while the others just look different but function in the same way. I started with something relatively easy by having my green rooms give an extra turn when they are completed. In this context completed means connecting all the open doorways to other rooms. I think putting the special functionality behind this extra task of completing the room gives the game a nice extra layer of decision making. Should you finish the room and get an extra turn or instead finish another room that lets you sabotage the other player. It's a tough choice and it could make or break your game. Of course the only right answer is to take the extra turn and use that new turn to sabotage the other player. But that kind of ruins my example so uh, never mind. You might also have noticed from this clip that I added a quick scoring panel to the top of the screen. It just keeps track of the room scores for each player, nothing fancier than that. Next, I decided to give my orange rooms a special function that when they get completed they will cherish their neighbor rooms by giving them an extra upgrade level. Who wouldn't want a neighbor like that? This was also relatively straightforward to add as I could largely use my existing code for detecting neighbors and then granting the upgrade level. I only had an issue with animation timings. If a room lost an upgrade level by being placed next to the orange room and then on the same turn received an upgrade level by the completion of the orange room, the timing of the animations ended up being kind of confusing and not in sync with the other nearby rooms. Luckily this was easily solved by adding some checks and delays into the code so now the adjacency animations are handled first and then only after they are finished it's time for the completion animations. As my next special room functionality I wanted to add something a bit more challenging. I want to offer the player a lot of tools to interact with the other players so I figured I would add something that fits into that goal. After a short thinking session, I settled on equipping a room with a cannon. As is probably obvious, the purpose of the cannon room is to blow up enemy rooms from range. I started with a direct line for the trajectory of the cannonball, but my intention is to add a bit of randomness to where the cannon is shooting so it's not too reliable. That's why there's a 150 degree circle arc visible on the cannon. Maybe I will also add a more rare and reliable room that only shoots straight, but I think the randomness should add a fun element to the room 
where it's quite reliable on a close range, but the further you place it, the less reliable it gets. The randomness should also conveniently give the player something to complain about in their views. I wouldn't want my game to be too perfect, after all. While testing the rotation of the cannon, I also noticed this funny bug that you can actually destroy the available blocks. While that could introduce an interesting tactical element to the game, I'll probably need to fix that at some point. I'll also need to think if you can blow up your own rooms with the cannon. At least for now, I think I'll go with the friendly fire enabled. As they say, live by the cannon, get blown up by the cannon. Once I got the random rotation working, I started experimenting with firing the cannon multiple times. My idea is that each additional upgrade level would give an additional shot with the cannon. After testing it out for a while, I have to say, it feels like a pretty damn fun room to use. I just need to balance it so that it won't end up being too good and something that's always the obvious pick. Next, I decided to replace my green laser with an actual cannonball that gets shot out of the cannon. That wasn't very hard to do. I just added an additional sprite that gets transported from the cannon to where the cannon's ray cast first collides with a room. What was a bit harder, or at least more time consuming, was fighting Unity's animator so I could add a small explosion when the cannonball hits a target. A simple thing really, but I am using the same cannonball for each shot and for some reason the animator really didn't want me to switch the smoke sprite back into the cannonball sprite after each shot. Luckily, I did get it working after some tinkering though. At this point I figured I was done with the cannon, but then I started thinking that adding a motion trail to the cannonball might look cool. Unity has an existing component called trail renderer, so adding the trail was actually very easy. Okay, I think the cannon room is now done. What do you think? Does it look good or do you think it is still missing something? After finishing up with the cannon, I decided to start working on a simple dialogue system. My game probably won't have that much dialogue, but different characters will probably say a few words here and there. I already have the main evil mastermind character ready for the game, but I think I might want to have more characters. Getting art done for the game can be time consuming, so I figured it would be a smart move to try out the one character in the game already and make sure there aren't any issues before I start ordering additional characters. I started the dialogue system with a simple fade animation along with a simple sprite change for mood changes. I decided adding a small bounce to the sprite change might make it look a bit better. I think it could be improved further, but I think it's good enough for now at least. Next, I added the text with some simple graphics. Now that I have the dialogue system code in good order, I can simply hand the script a list of dialogue along with a list of poses and it will then show the lines in correct order with the right pose. Later on, I will most likely add a CSV integration so I can easily write out everything in Excel and then just import it to the game. I will also improve the dialogue visuals, but these are good enough for now as I can see that there aren't any issues with the character. At least none that I can notice. So I can now start preparing an order for some additional character art. And that's where I will end this devlog. In the next one, I'll probably keep adding different room completion effects to the rooms and I might give the player some special abilities to work with. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.